Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. Today I'm going to show you how to make a relief print. I'll be using lino for this project, so here I am just cutting my lino down to the size that I need. The easiest way to do this is to just cut lightly through the weave on the back of your lino if this is the type of lino that you've got. And you don't cut all the way through, you just cut through that, that little weave and then you can break it in half really easily. And if you want you can sand off your edges just to neaten them up a bit. I'm doing a two colour relief print using two different plates so I've marked the top corner of each plate on the back in the same spot just so that I get my orientation correct. What I'm using this relief print for is to make some labels for some wine that we made at home. So I've designed my label in Photoshop and I would normally use carbon paper to trace it onto my block but I couldn't find it, I don't know where it's gone, it's missing. So I've just coloured the back of my printout with some soft pastel and I'm using a pencil to trace through and the soft pastel is going onto the block and then once I've done that I'm going to go over that again with a pen so it's a bit darker. I've also made a couple of notes on my blocks to show big patches where I want to cut out just so that I cut out the right area. I'm just going to run through a few tools and bits and pieces that are useful for carving and other things that you need such as cutting materials. The first thing is this sheet of rubber matting. It's just a non-slip mat that stops the uh, block from sliding around which is really useful. It makes things a lot safer and a lot easier. So first I've got a set of lion's tools that I bought which are sharpenable and really good quality steel and really nice to hold with that mushroom handle shape. And that comes with a few different flat u-gouges for clearing out large areas. It comes with a small u-gouge for doing small lines and a regular size V tool for carving lines as well. And a knife, which you would use the knife more for if you're cutting wood rather than lino. And I've also got this beautiful Japanese tool, which is a one millimeter tool. So it's very, very, very fine. And it's also a really high grade steel that you can sharpen well. And then I've also got a cheaper option here, which is a really good starting out option from Speedball, which has a few different flat U-gouges, I think two U-gouges, a V-gouge, a knife, and a very small V-gouge as well, which is similar in size to the one on my Japanese tool, but obviously a lot less expensive. So for carving these blocks, I'm going to cut the text out with the very fine V-tool. Take your time doing this, go slowly, go as slowly as you like. The main rule is to always cut away from your hand, never cut towards your hand. So always keep your the hand keeping things steady behind the hand that's carving because you don't want to slip and cut yourself. I find with text it's easier to do the vertical strokes, the horizontal strokes and then your curves rather than trying to do the whole letter in one pass. With relief prints like liner cuts and wood cuts, the ink is rolled onto the plate and it's going to go onto any spot that you haven't carved away. So anything that you want to be gone, that you don't want to pick up ink or colour, you carve away. Anything you do want to have ink and colour, you leave as is. Then to clear out the larger areas I'm cutting first with just a normal size B tool to get the line and then I'm going back in with my flat U gouge to clear out large sections of area. My tip for this would be to treat the carving tool like it's a pen or a pencil or something. You want the cutting strokes to run in the same directions you would do as if it was a drawing. Especially when you're carving out large areas like this the ink still does sometimes pick up on the carved spots so you want it to look like it's supposed to be there. With this kind of two colour design I like to plan for movement in the blocks because my registration is never going to be absolutely perfect and if I designed it with perfection in mind I would always be disappointed 
so I like to just have a bit of fluidity in the design so that if it is a bit off registration it looks like it's supposed to be that way. For the little circular cutouts in this, I'm marking first with just a, a round punch tool that I have. It's not particularly sharp though, so it didn't do a great job. And then I'm going back in with another tool to pull out the centre of the dot. And then I'm just going back around it with that very fine tool to neaten it up a bit. It was a mistake. One of the handy things about carving on these rubber mats is you can just put all your rubbish onto it and pick it up and get rid of it and it's gone. Easy clean up. The next step is to get your paper prepared for printing. When I'm printing multiple colour plates I like to do quite a few extras just in case there's some stuff ups because there's always some stuff ups. So for this I think my aim was for like 25 prints or something because we've got around about that many bottles of wine. So I'm doing somewhere between 30 and 35 prints to cover just in case. And I'm using a Japanese Hosho paper for this which is a really strong but thin Japanese paper and I'm cutting it off an old roll that I've got. So I've got some raggedy edges on the roll that I need to clean up and I'm just making all my paper a uniform size so that the registration is easy to do. I would normally tear my paper for a print but with this I'm cutting because when you're doing a reduction print or a two colour print you want to make a little registration sheet and be able to easily line the paper up on that sheet and when you've got a hard edge it's easier to keep your registration in line than when you've got a torn edge. So here I am making my little registration sheet. I haven't done it in a very dark colour sorry so you can't actually see it but you can see what I'm doing. I just do it on a like a rough sheet of paper, like a sheet of newsprint or something, and I mark around the edges of my sheet of paper first, and then I put my block down and I just mark the top corner of that block as well, and I write any notes that I need on the registration sheet. So I've drawn the same mark that I've got in the top corner of my of the back of my block on this, so that I know to put that corner down at that corner, so everything faces the right way, and just a couple of little other notes for myself. And when I'm printing, I like to put this registration sheet under the sheet of acetate on my press or whatever I'm printing because I can just wipe that sheet of acetate down and I can keep reusing that registration sheet rather than throwing it away and starting again. Now next up, I'm going to be rolling out some ink to use for my plates. I'm using a blue ink and a yellow ink. The inks that I'm using today are water-based inks, which means they're pretty easy to clean up. They do dry very fast, so that's something I just need to watch throughout the printing process to make sure my ink's not drying too much on the slab. Occasionally with these water-based inks it does dry up and I have to scrape it off and re-roll out. Usually with oil-based inks you don't have to do that, but these water-based inks I'm using today because A, I have them, and B, they dry really fast, which is great. And I've got a couple of different rollers here that you can see. The black one is a fairly cheap roller, but it's good quality. I think the brand is SD. And the, the reddish roller that's on the right is a better quality sort of Japanese roller that doesn't have a brand, it's just called Japanese roller. The difference between these rollers is A, they're different widths, but that doesn't really matter too much. I've just got a variety of different sizes of roller to suit different projects. The main thing is the quality of the rubber on the Japanese roller is a bit better and the diameter is also bigger, which means I can pick up more ink and roll down more ink in one pass. And the other tools that I'm using here are just some thin, narrow paint scrapers that have got a squared off edge that make it easy to mix the ink and take it out of the container. So what I do here is I get the ink out in a little blob on my glass slab. You can use just a sheet of perspex or a bit of glass from a frame. I use this dresser that I bought from Ikea, which is really handy. It's got a drawer that I can keep stuff in and it's nice and big and it's also got the, the white backing so that I can see the, the colour of the ink really easily. I get my ink out in a little blob on the slab and mix it up a bit just to make sure that it's consistent and good. And then I get a little bit of that and I place it out in a line on the slab, which I then roll out with the roller. It's best to not just roll straight from your big blob of ink because you'll get too much ink. Just roll out a little bit at a time and when you start running out of ink, put a little bit more on. This is going to sound weird, but you want it to sound kind of like onion skin. It's got this sort of sh sh sound but you want a nice thin layer of ink on your slab which you'll then roll onto your block and what I do is I roll one lot I add some more ink to my roller in about eight rolls 
roll another eight lots of ink or so on the thing and do that process three times so you get three layers of ink on your block and that will give you a nice even coverage. Now the first method of printing that I'm showing here is probably the most accessible to everyone. It's just literally putting your block down, putting a piece of paper down on top on your registration sheet and rubbing the back of the print with a spoon. You can use any spoon you want. I'm going to show you this spoon and then for the next print I'm going to show you the wooden spoon and then I'll show you a printing barrier. So I'm putting the paper back down, being careful with my registration. I put it down from the same angle each time so that the prints have the most chance of lining up. And then I pat it down a little bit so that it sticks and then get the spoon onto it. Normally people would let one colour of ink dry and then come back when it's dry and print the other colour of ink so that you get opaque coverage. I specifically want my colours to blend in a certain spot on the print and become green. So I'm just printing wet into wet. You can also do this when the print is dry by mixing something called extender into your ink, which makes it more transparent. Now here I'm printing with the back of the wooden spoon. This was a bit easier because there's more surface area on the spoon, but because the spoon's not as smooth, it, it, or maybe because I didn't pay as much attention, the print actually came out a little less even. Also, with your first couple of prints, they're generally not going to be as good as the rest of the prints just because you haven't got as much ink on your block yet. Once you've run one or two prints through, it gets a lot better. Set it so now And it's good And in case it might You said It's over now Now this last method of hand printing that I'm showing you here I'm using what's called a baron This is a pretty fancy baron It's one of the more expensive kinds I like this one because it's got a lot of hand clearance some of the cheaper ones don't have a high handle like that and if you're doing a lot of printing it can be a bit hard on your knuckles but for a little bit of printing here and there they're totally fine. There's a particular black plastic one that's cheaper that I like that I'll link down below but this one is by Speedball and it's got um, a little bit of padding in it and a Teflon coat and it prints beautifully. So that's my three prints from the different hand printing methods and next up I'm going to print with my press. So this is an etching press but you can also use it to print relief. So I'm setting up some runners down the side that's the same height as my ink blocks and then just setting the press to the right tension. So those runners help the press run more smoothly and not drop off the edge of the block. And I'm just getting my registration sheet and setting it all up so that it's good to go. and just putting a little bit of paper backing on the back just for some padding. A 
press is definitely the easiest and fastest method and gives you the most even print, but it's also by far and away the most expensive. And printing by hand with minimal materials is really great. At one of the print studios I used to go to, there was a sign up on the wall in the toilets that said, if you don't have time to clean up, you don't have time to print. So I'm showing you the clean up step here, just so that you can see how easy it is to clean up a water-based ink. But I do this the same way for my oil-based inks as well. I just don't use water. So I scrape the ink off my slab with a little clean up razor blade. And then I just go over it with a wet sponge and then go over it with a paper towel again and clean all my tools as well and clean my blocks. So that's the relief printing done, like you're good to go from there if you just want to do a relief print. I'm going to add a little bit more text to my block with some letterpress. I'm not going to print it on my letterpress machine, I'm going to print it by hand, but I'm going to set it the way that I would set it normally, which is a lot of trial and error getting things to fit inside this little frame that's called a chase. I'm making sure everything's even, swapping out letters that aren't quite printing properly, etc. So you want to make sure it's all locked up tight so that you can pick it up and nothing falls out. And I'm going to print literally by hand. So I'm going to mix my ink up to the colour that I want, which is an orange, roll it up and print it by hand. And the reason I'm not printing this on my press is the ink that I'm using is not really letterpress ink and it's going to dry way too fast on the letterpress machine. So this way I've got a little bit more control over the, the whole process. And I'm just doing a little proof to make sure everything's printing properly, have a look at it, it's all good, and then I'm good to go. And so for setting this, I make a little jig with cardboard just by cutting out the space where the text's going to go. Then I line up the paper on that, line that up on the text, and then just rub it lightly with the back of my hand. And then just repeat that until I'm done. So this is the constellation Aquilius, which is the little horse, and I'm cutting the shape into the shape of the constellation. And I've just, again, I've just made a little cardboard jig for this and I'm doing about five of them at a time, making sure I've got a nice sharp blade. And the last step is to stick them on my bottles, which I found a glue stick does super well.
And that's it. Please remember to like, subscribe, share and comment if you like this video and stay tuned to Spines and Splines for more great projects and little exercises you can do in your studio or workspace. Cheers. Bye.